A catastrophic tsunami rising out of the Pacific, its huge waves sweeping away everything in its path. A massive wall of water that rose as high as 30 feet, swallowing up parts of Japan. Throughout the seaside cities of the north, stunning devastation. shut up now and go to our guest who joins us from the uh, roads there uh, in England. Uh, he's on the road. Piers Richard Corbin, meteorologist, astrophysicist, consultant, and owner of Weather Action. And he's hailed by CNN, Fox, BBC uh, as the only guy who can predict with over 90% accuracy, some say 86% accuracy, a year out what's going to happen. They got 55 operating the supply of power and a bunch of other research facilities. Uh, 52 light water, 55 overall. Uh, Mr. Corbin, uh, again, what is your accuracy a year out? I forget the exact number. And give us your view uh, on ABC and others saying that uh, did supermoon cause 8.9 earthquake in Japan? What is a supermoon, sir? Uh, right. Well, our accuracy rate is uh, uh, 85% for extreme events forecasted many months ahead. And that's based on a combination of solar and lunar uh, effects. Um, a a supermoon is when the moon is closest to the Earth and is also it's also full or new. But basically, uh, that, that type of that situation gives you the strongest um, tidal effect. Um, now, the idea that the supermoon helps trigger earthquakes is absolutely correct. We we agree with that, and we know there is a lunar signal in um, earthquake data. Uh, but we also know that to actually trigger an earthquake, it seems very helpful, you might say, if there is also uh, major activity on the sun just preceding the moment where there will be some lunar effects in terms of tides. And, and by the uh, way, uh, Doctor... Uh, there was a big X solar flare yesterday. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I interrupted you. It, it hit yesterday. The effect of it hit yesterday. Uh, sir, I interrupted you uh, because there was a little bit of time yeah. delay. Uh, repeat that. You're saying if there's lunar and solar together, that you know, there's yeah. evidence uh, and, and that we, That's right. we did have both yesterday. Please repeat it in detail. Yes, what you need to get a big earthquake is a combination of a lunar and solar effect. You need uh, a big events on the sun, and then events, those events affect the solar wind, and you need the solar wind uh, coronal mass ejections to be directed to Earth. And yesterday, Earth was hit by a coronal mass ejection. And at the same time, it helps if you've also got uh, extra lunar tidal effects on the Earth crust. And that's what we've got right now. So, uh, or, or near that, so um, that, that uh, gives us what, we, what we're seeing. Well, sir, as a leading meteor... Talk of the supermoon began weeks before the earthquake hit Japan, and one AccuWeather blogger says he didn't believe it, but now he's been convinced. I believe that the Earth may have already felt some of the supermoon's effects. 
It could be a huge coincidence that this earthquake was not influenced by the supermoon. But in my totally unscientific opinion, having no hard evidence to back it up, it doesn't seem like just coincidence to me. But a blogger for Discover says there's no way the moon caused the earthquake in Japan. When the earthquake in Japan hit, the moon was about 240,000 miles away. So not only was it not at its closest point, it was actually farther away than it usually is on average. The earthquake in Japan and other natural disasters likely to happen are terrible tragedies. We're not making it any better by panicking over something we know isn't real. Most astronomers say any gravitational effects typically happen within three days of the supermoon. But Noli tells ABC Australia the time span can be longer. We don't have to have one uh, at the maximum close approach to have a notable effect. For example, the February 18 supermoon just passed. Uh, that one was in effect for uh, various reasons from the 12th of February through the 21st. And, uh, of course, we had the, the awful uh, Christchurch earthquake on the 21st in universal time, 22nd down there. A TG Daily blogger still doesn't buy into the moon phenomenon and says the special supermoon alignment will only make for a great photo. Indeed, because it's a full moon, the sun and moon are actually pulling on the earth from opposite directions, weakening rather than strengthening tides. So just sit back and appreciate the view. I'm out. You got it. Let's go to Natalie in Seabrook, Texas. First time caller. Hey, Natalie. Hey, George. I'm a first time caller. Thanks for taking my I'm call. I'm glad so you excited. got through. What took you so long? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I guess it's just been hard getting through sometimes. You know, you're a popular guy. Well, sometimes. That's true. <laughs> Well, I just had a comment about uh, what you and Alex were talking today. It kind of relates to what the gentleman was saying before. Oh, you listened to Alex's show. That's where I was. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, my comment is um, cftc.gov slash law regulation slash federal register slash comment files slash 08-004. That was you. I believe. Yeah, I believe that that is the exact address where that uh, file is for the CFTC regarding uh, weather modification. And this is a government file, and it uh, actually explains from beginning to end how all weather is modified by the government, that all these events that are going on in Australia and all these floods and earthquakes have actually been controlled with Tesla technology that was found out.